good afternoon and welcome to CEC Gurukul lecture in continuation with the series on Indian sociological tradition. I am going to again today talk about Professor M. N. Srinivas and his contribution to the understanding of field work and the study of one society. Uh, as a reminder, we have done a series of lecture on M. N. Srinivas and we have looked on into his contribution to sociology in terms of institutionalizing the discipline in India and also in a large way contributing to the paradigm shift in sociology. As a re, uh, to repeat, the three important paradigm shift that Srinivas introduced in the discipline of sociology was number one, in terms of kind of looking into the understanding of using anthropology psychological methodology that is he was advocating in the intensive field work and participant observation for the study of Indian society. And when he kind of tells us that we need to sociologist needs to do field work to from and it can be done in the village, in the factory, in the corporate sector, every realm of the society can be subject to study. So, he was trying to tell us that sociology and anthropology should not be considered as two separate discipline. The second paradigm shift was in terms of making us make giving a shift from a book view or a ideological perspective, a textual understanding to an empirical understanding of Indian society. And the third was in terms of starting a micro level study where he believed that the village would give us an understanding or, or an entry point to understand society in India. So, when we look into all this work and on and off he has been writing about methodology and methods. So, it is very important to understand the paradigm shift in anthropological or field work that was kind of given to us by uh, M. N. Srinivas. So, today let us understand what he meant by he, uh, the term field work and also in terms of how he kind of created this understanding that as sociologist, as anthropologist, we can study our own society. To start off, let us try to understand that he was among the one odd anthropologist of his time as he was the only one specifically he was doing field work and to kind of uh, understand this is in the 1920s, much of the study of India as an object of study was done by western scholars, by Indologists and the prevalent idea in the discipline of anthropology was to consider sociology and so anthropology as distinct, as separate. And one of the distinction which was marked out by was that sociology was the study of one's own society. Now, this use of the term one's own society had a certain kind of a mindset. It implied the modern, the industrial or to kind of say the white population and the anthropology was this discipline which was engaged in the study of other society. Now, this other society meant the primitive society. So, this uh, there was a kind of a colonial uh, 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 orientalist view point where there was an understanding that scholars from the advanced industrial society would be studying the primitive society or those who were kind of uh, non-industrial or were living in rural areas uh, were, were simple in their lifestyle. So, there was this distinction between sociology and anthropology was based in terms of the field where or, or the uh, area where one was studying. So, most of the anthropologists basically the British anthropologists were trying to understand uh, the uh, life or the society of non-white population and there was an, a hierarchy. The uh, 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 it was a belief or a bias that the European and the uh, 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 Britishers were kind of uh, trying to understand the non-white population who were regarded as inferior, ignorant and also in need of protection. So, the study of the other was considered as an intellectual effort. So, anthropologists were considered as intellectually ordained, intellectually capable of going to the primitive society, going to tribal society and kind of making an effort to study the their conditions. And in this context then, it was believed that the other study of other society was kind of more difficult than studying one's own society and it was a kind of challenging task for the anthropologist. So, in order uh, can, and the second idea was that once you studied the other society because it was kind of primitive, it was backward, it would, would enable you to understand the more advanced industrial society. So, the study of other society was a preparation 
preparation for the study of one's own society. But much of the anthropologists, when we look into the British anthropologists basically, most of them were studying the uh, other society, whether we talk about Malinowski, we talk of Evans Pritchard, Radcliffe Brown, they all selected a society say in Africa, Australia and they were kind of did their intensive research and came out with certain kind of uh, uh, generalization. So, the method which these anthropologists were you may use making use of to study the other society was participant observation. So, two things are uh, kind of a taken for granted assumption one that anthropology would study the other society two to, uh, to study the other society the method which was appropriate was participant observation. And at the same time it was kind of believed that studying uh, one society you need to be a trained so anthropologist, you require to go uh, do a little bit of research and then come as a, a trained researcher to study your own society. Therefore, if you were a beginner or a in kind of just a, 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 in a in starter or you just came into the field of discipline, it was expected that you go to the other society kind of undergo the training, be uh, involved in participant observation and then come and study your own uh, uh, society. So, it was implied that participant observation was a kind of understanding your own society through the eyes of other. So, and we know as I have already said that most of the British anthropologists in, uh, in the beginning were taking recourse to participant observation. And the most classical example is a study of Malinowski that is he studied the uh, Trobriand Islanders and his work was published as Agronaut of Western uh, Pacific where he is talking about the economic life of these people. Following uh, uh, or even uh, uh, earlier we have Rattle Brown who studied uh, the society and we also have other anthropologists like Mayor Fortes. Uh, a uh, um, number of them Evans Pritchard who was studying the society which was considered to be a kind of less advanced or were considered as primitive. According to Malinowski the knowledge of other that is when we study the other society helped us to understand one's own society. So, the route to understanding of self is through the study of others and the reason why they were kind of doing this was that were, was kind of putting it within the evolutionary framework where society was seen as progressive. So, society was seen as progressing from a primitive simple society to an advanced industrial society. So, you can understand the present only when you go back and know what happened in the past. So, the anthropologist wanted to know what happened in the past was what was for that they selected the other society or they selected the non-white population. So, the study of other society by anthropologist was however more or so uh, not kind of something which was uh, found worldwide, but it was more in terms of the British anthropologist. In America it was different. In America the anthropologist was studying their own society and they were also kind of producing innumerable studies of various facet of American society and culture. So, this idea that uh, it was only kind of restricted to the study of other society was something which was only true of British anthropologist. And one of the reason that uh, American anthropologists could study their own society was because of the uh, uh, existence of the heterogeneous uh, population in terms of immigrants. So, you had different kind of uh, if we kind of look into the society as a kind of a laboratory where anthropologists are doing their research, they had these different kinds of immigrants coming in from different parts of the world which they were kind of being studied by American anthropologists. Now, what happened in the countries in the developing uh, countries? Now, this uh, knowledge or this discourse that an, a study of other society enabled you to kind of acquire a training to study your own society was accepted. But for anthropologists in developing country it was a challenge. It was a challenge in the developing country because of fund. Now, from European country from Britain America anthropologists uh, had the funding they were able to come uh, fund their research and come and study the colonial countries. But in a, uh, especially in India it was a huge crisis social sciences funding has be was limited even say uh, 
when uh, M. N. Srinivas was a student of PhD at Bombay University in the 1940. He only got a stipend of Rs. 75 for doing a uh, field work among Kurds of Mysore. And even down into the, in recent time, the funding, that, though there has been an in increase in the funding from government agency and other agency for funding, but when we compare fundings for social sciences to physical sciences, the funding are drastically very low. So, this, 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 uh, this is a huge uh, uh, crisis, financial crisis, where researchers from the developing country cannot afford to go to other countries and do their research. So, the way out would be kind of uh, figure out and find a field of one's own where we can study our own society. And uh, this is what uh, Srinivas would kind of suggest that India as a country which is in diverse uh, background, religion, caste, region, language, linguistic differences provides a kind of a wide variety of researches and you, they are kind of uh, he also writes that in India is waiting for a large amount of researches to be done. So, the diversity in India could be an advantage for researchers to start doing research rather than waiting for funding and going abroad to do research in other society. So, he is trying to his uh, approach was certainly that we kind of start off at the level of uh, micro level study of caste, particular caste, particular community, particular religion, region and then at the micro level we kind of connect it at the larger macro level study. So, he was one of the uh, odd anthropologists or the only one who kind of gives us an innovative combination. He kind of uh, gives us that we use participant observation to study our own society. So, this was his methodological contribution. Till uh, uh, all anthropologists till his time were using participant observations to study the other society. Srinivas uses participant observation to study his own society. All his study of Kurg and Rampura are based on participant observation. And so, he says that when an Indian anthropologist is studying a group or a community other than his own local group, he is undertaking a study that is both familiar and strange. So, uh, is the whole idea that when we have a huge population which is of uh, diverse, uh, di uh, full of diversity, we as an Indian are somehow familiar, but then belonging to one particular caste, belonging to one particular community, we do not have an in-depth knowledge of all the caste, all the other community. So, there is a kind of familiarity, yet there is a strangeness and this strangeness uh, or the lack of knowledge could either could be taken up as an advantage and study different segment within the Indian society. So, when it is uh, he is studying someone other. So, it is both the study of other well as one's own society. So, you uh, being say uh, for example, if there is kind of one is in a Brahmin in uh, Uttar Pradesh and decides to study the Kshatriyas or maybe the Dalit community from, um, from say another state. So, that state that or that community or the field which he selects, he or she selects for research is actually both other and also the same. So, that is what he would say study of the self in the other. So, he kind of uh, evolves this methodological instance of using the uh, field, the vast field of Indian society as a field work for study of uh, different uh, aspect of society. So, the phrase that he gives us is self in the other. And you, so, uh, we are not totally, uh, it is not totally other. For instance, Malinowski coming from Britain going to uh, study the uh, agrograt, it was completely uh, unknown and there was no question of familiarity. But here, if an anthro anthropologist is studying a segment, a different segment, it is not completely other, but yet it is kind of different from one's own. So, this is kind of an extraordinary complex layered and there is lot of conflicting tendencies and the conflicting tendencies especially when we look in terms of research as a tool in social sciences, we then kind of end up in terms of the whether the study of one's own society with which we are familiar raises a question of subjectivity. Would, would that research be affected by one's personal bias because some amount of knowledge, some amount of uh, idea of that society is known. 
So, it kind of uh, can kind of create an obstacle in terms of subjectivity of uh, and how we achieve objectivity in these uh, in our research. Srinivas considered the study of one's own society not only feasible, but essential for the best that culture studied by both outsiders and insider. So, this is another uh, uh, kind of a research problem when we go to the field, especially when we go to an other society, we need to kind of uh, struggle through that identity of being an insider and outsider. So, most of the time it is difficult to enter a society and become an insider. This uh, question of inside and outside kind of gets uh, solved when we are studying the other in our own society, because we are other yet at one time we do say the same culture, we do say the same uh, uh, space. So, that I, uh, uh, the transition from an outsider to insider becomes uh, easily negotiated. So, when we look into this whole idea, we get that uh, he was on advocating or he stresses on participant observation. Now, what does he mean by the term participant observation? He means that participant observation is a technique of data collection where a well trained anthropologist goes to the area or the people of his choice that is the, uh, the field one selects to study and spends a long enough period and this period could be from a year to say two years or something, you have in depth spending. So, you just uh, it is not just kind of observing people, you are participating in the everyday functioning of the society. So, it might end up kind of taking up residence there, staying there, wearing or uh, uh, doing everything that the uh, and so you would put yourself in the shoes of your respondent and collect an in depth knowledge. So, staying conditions similar to those of natives. So, even many a time the cultural differences are there, one has to do away with those cultural differences, learn the language of the respondent, uh, also kind of establish a friendly relation because rapport building is very important in research. We need to have a one to one relation with the respondent in order to be able to collect data. And the data which is collected through participant observation is has to be kind of unbiased. The researchers ideas, the researchers point of view will not come into it. It has to be idea which is completely that of the respondent. And therefore, it is kind of in uh, research in social sciences, it is considered as a technique of qualitative research. And it is many a time kind of differentiated from a quantitative technique which could be a survey. So, in a survey which kind of takes a kind of a response from the respondent, it could be an open ended where it uh, uh, you, the one kind of expresses the opinion, but most of the time it is close ended that is it is either asking you an option of yes or no, agree or disagree. So, that kind of does not reflect the actual mind of the respondent. Whereas, the participant observation we are able to put in the data as it is in the minds of the respondent. So, therefore, qualitative research as kind of me considered as more suitable for uh, studying our own society. According to Srinivas, the principle of participant observation is also about learning. It is about learning uh, the people, learning their lifestyle, learning the behavior, learning the language. So, it is not only uh, to be considered as something which has an end result in terms of data. It is a process of training the anthropologist. So, you not only end up creating a huge amount of data, but you would end up kind of uh, increasing your knowledge about your own society. So, to capture the India's caste tradition, Srinivas imagined that anthropologists must put themselves in the place far from the pace of change in cities, in center of government, a place of status and continuity with the past. So, this uh, kind there was no limitation in terms of where which area or which what uh, category of uh, people one would kind of do research. It could be in the village, it could be in the factory, it could be in the government office, uh, it, uh, uh, it could only kind of with one objective of increasing an in depth awareness and in depth knowledge of the community that one is studying. 
So, what are the par advantages of participant observation? According to Srinivas, uh, the participant observation is a great asset and a highly productive methodological aid particularly in the study of culture and social life. So, here is the kind of an advantage of a qualitative method where the a task of the sociologist or anthropologist is to kind of understand the culture which is kind of uh, varies from society to society and also from time and space. So, in order to acquire an in-depth knowledge of the culture and social life, it is very important for the part, uh, uh, researcher to kind of understand every uh, nitty gritty of it. So, he shows the relevance of participant observation as a method even for those who are interested in regional, state or national studies. So, he is not saying that it should only be suited for village study or it should only be studied for the primitive society. It is a technique which can be equally acquired for studying the tribal community as well as advanced industrial society. Next, he says that it can serve as a system of apprenticeship can help in interpreting other data on social institution and be crucial aid to intellectual development. Participant observation need not be only for small community. As I already said that he kind of changes the understanding of participant observation as in the anthropological discipline, it was restricted to the study of other community restricted to the study of simple society. Now, he is saying that it can be and he is kind of influenced by William Foot White uh, street corner society where uh, uh, it is considered as a classical phase of studying the industrial society advanced modern society from the perspective of a participant observation. So, what are the steps for participant observation? The first step that he uh, puts forward is that since it requires a lot of uh, debate between subjectivity and objectivity, it is important that the researcher develops a measure of detachment. So, there has to be you have to be detached from your own society, whatever understanding, whatever ideological biases are there, it has to be kind of left over behind and this detachment has to be both at the level of emotion and intellect. So, by doing field work, by going to the field and spending time doing an in-depth research would enable a researcher to achieve this detachment. So, field work in an alien society actually prepares the researcher to do it in a subjective and an unbiased manner. Srinivas was of opinion that a sociologist takes on the role of novel novelist. Just as a novelist knows every aspect, every character, so the sociologist has to be aware of every uh, dimension of the community that he or she is researching. But there is one difference. Unlike the novelist who is interested in terms of kind of only portraying uh, a, a picture or a visual, the sociologist has to kind of arrive at a theory, it has to arrive at a, some kind of uh, theorization. So, the self in the other, he also gives us the example of a community where his community was a Brahmin, but just next door there was a uh, of a shepherd community and he says that once you are studying this shepherd community, it is the other who is in the next door. So, the next door uh, community can be a newer or a, a, a Shanti or Talan, see all these are tribal model which has been studied by the anthropologist. So, the Kurubas were the ta, a uh, separate community which was just staying next a few uh, street away from the Srinivas uh, who was a Brahmin and staying in a Brahmin community and he kind of says that it is represents a self in the study and he says that the self in the other is can be used for studying the tribal community. The tribal community has been a part of assimilation and acculturation in our society and we can use this to uh, uh, understand and then he ends up by saying that most Indian uh, sociologist and anthropologist has been studying the self in the other and now it is required that we start doing self itself. That is every individual's life, every individual's community is an ethnographic field and if our life can be taken up as a case study and we do a qualitative study of our community of our life. So, this was the methodological uh, instance or this is the kind of an innovative method which Srinivas gives us to study our own society. Thank you.